joke. Um, apologies for the delay. I'm so glad that we uh, found a technical solution and that we can all be here together. It's really a pleasure and an honor for me to be moderating this session, and I'm so glad that uh, we can finally make, make it. So my name is Brigitte Vizna, and I'm the Director of Policy and Open Culture at Creative Commons, and I'm really thrilled to be here with Deborah, uh, Yolanda, uh, Giovanna and uh, hopefully Viviana, who will join us uh, in a few moments. I'll introduce them a bit later. And uh, with uh, with this incredible panel of speakers, we'll spend some time discussing the many facets of copyright reform to promote better sharing of knowledge and culture in different parts of the world. Giovanna is joining from Brazil, and Yolanda and Deborah are in Italy, and uh, Viviana should be joining us from Colombia. So I think that on this panel, we all share the understanding that preservation, access, sharing, use and reuse of cultural heritage are essential for communities to, to thrive. And we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic that it's also essential to, to build resilience. Um, and it's imperative that we uh, in the open and free knowledge movement support these critical activities. And that's one of the reasons that Creative Commons already 20 years ago launched the copyright licenses. But here we are today and people are still facing an incredible amount of challenges in sharing cultural heritage online. Cultural in institutions, for example, they often struggle to just carry out their legitimate activities like digitizing collections for preservation and to make them available to the public. So why do they struggle where, well, there are many reasons and we recently shared um, a report on barriers to open culture and I'll, I'll share the link in the chat if, if I can um, manage that. Um, and I'll invite you to take a look. And in this session now we'll zoom in into one of the most prominent challenges and that's copyright. Uh, outdated, inadequate, unclear, or improper copyright policies that generally raise unnecessary barriers to cultural heritage sharing. So what can we do about this? Well, I'm glad that our speakers today will be uh, able to shed light on some of those barriers, share their experiences about how within their various initiatives, they, uh, they can strive to overcome such challenges. We'll see that all these initiatives are different, but they share common elements. Uh, one more thing, I know that um, we, we reserve some time at the end of the session for questions. So um, hopefully we'll get uh, them through the chat and uh, feel free to ask them, we'll, we'll take them uh, towards the end. So without further ado, um, I would like to introduce our uh, first speaker and this will be uh, Giovanna. We are changing the order a little bit from what we had planned. Uh, Giovanna Fontanelli, she's a journalist, historian, educator. She has a master's, uh, she's a master's student in social history. She works as a program officer for Glam and Culture at the Wikimedia Foundation. So she's a familiar familiar face to most of you, and she's a general coordinator of Creative Commons Brazil, besides being a member of the uh, Creative Commons Global Network, uh, Wiki uh, Movement of Brazil, User Group, and Icon Brazil. So her current activities are related to Glam Wiki, Open Glam, and Linked Open Data Initiatives, in addition to other projects on diversity, mainly gender, knowledge, uh, and uh, sorry, not, uh, knowledge equity. So over to you, Joella. Uh, thank you, Brigitte. Thank you so much. Uh, it's um, a pleasure to be invited to this panel. Um, besides uh, other people with amazing work and uh, to be part of Wikimedia this year. You know, I'm a Wikimedian, so I'm very glad to be always um, in this conference. Uh, I'm going to share my screen a little bit. Um, oh, I see that I can't share. Let me see. Okay, I don't think I can share. Uh, that's okay, I have prepared some slides. Maybe I can uh, just uh, work with them without the image part. Oh, I can now. Oh, let's see. One moment, please. Uh, 
Um, I hope that you can see my screen. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, we can see it. Um, so today I am presenting uh, this brief uh, presentation, Supporting GLAMs in Brazil, Advocating for Open Access, Guiding the Usage of CC License and Contributing to the Wikimedia Projects. And uh, I would like to start with, um, oh, this one, um, with this slide. So Brazilian laws that are related to copyright are not that bad. Uh, we do respect public domain, different from the experience that I think we will hear in a few minutes. Um, and we have freedom of panorama, and we do have some laws that find exceptions like the law number 13146, the statute of the person with disabilities uh, that states, the person with disabilities have the right to culture, sports, uh, tourism, leisure on equal basis to other people. And on the paragraph two, it says that the public authorities must adopt solutions aimed at eliminating, reducing, and overcoming barriers to promote access to all cultural heritage in compliance with the accessibility, environmental, and national historic, historic and historic heritage standards. And that law makes it possible for Brazilian heritage institutions to create alternatives for people with disability to access culture that help flourish and uh, this kind of accessible content like 3D versions of 2D works and tactical exhibitions. And even though we have a good law directly at people with disabilities, which is great, we still have a long way to go. And I would like to highlight uh, this platform um, uh, that in translating it for English, even though it's a, a platform in Spanish, it's, it is about flexibilities to, to um, the copyrights in Latin America. And when we see here at the side, we can see the session about libraries and uh, archives and uh, a few different lines like public loan, exchange between libraries, out of commerce works, often works, evasion of digital rights management and other um, possibilities. And uh, when we change that, and we can, I don't know if I, I could share this, um, but I don't think, um, sorry, I don't think it's good for me to change tabs right now, but I would very much like uh, you, uh, if you can, after this presentation, to go into that website to check what I'm talking about. But basically, when you change this, you can see the variation of this, uh, this sections here um, within the Latin American countries. And in Brazil, in the case of Brazil, we appear as read in every single one of those um, uh, those possibilities, which is, of course, a problem. We still have a very long way to go. Uh, but there is there's also the fact that we live in the global south in a marginalized society. And the survey of open glam access and public policy practice by Douglas McCartney and uh, Andrew Wallace is an amazing research that helps us to identify open glam initiatives around the world. And we can see that we have fewer of them in the Globe South and especially in uh, Latin America. So we have 30 seconds in, actually here is not South America, it's uh, Latin America. We have uh, out of uh, uh, 1,435 institutions. We have 37 in Latin America and nine in Brazil. Uh, through this survey, we can see quite clearly the problem we face in the global south. Uh, this is uh, an overview of, uh, of um, the Brazilian in the Latin America situation. But at the same time, we are, we, we are uh, uh, in the global south, we are 80% of the population with access to internet in the world. And we do have a lot of heritage, formal heritage institutions. So what is the problem? What is happening so that we can see that being reflected in open uh, access, open GLAM initiatives um, all over the internet? First, we have our structural problem. Uh, these charts here from uh, digital collections in museums, a manual for carrying out projects, a publication about current 
shorter state of Brazilian glam institutions by the Tainacan project. Um, it shows that uh, most of the um, institutions, they do share their collection catalog on the internet is 83%. But uh, when we see the below chart, we can see that only 23% of them uh, share their um, digitalized collections to the public over the internet. Um, and that's of course a problem, but the second um, problem that we do have is the problem with qualification. So if you see here this first chart, we can see that the, 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 the major difficulty is the lack of funding. Uh, the second um, major problem is the lack of a qualified staff. And that staff, I meant by uh, technical staff that knows not only the technical um, uh, ingredients to make it uh, uh, um, make it possible to share the, the, the content, but also the understanding of copyright. Um, here is another um, chart that shows like basically that a lot of institutions do share their, their collections, but only uh, in the place of the institution, even though it's digitalized and only 14% um, of them do share over the internet, but only on the, uh, on the social media. And what Creative Commons Brazil is trying to do as best as it can uh, on a 100% volunteer basis, especially in its uh, GLAM coordination since 2020 and the mix of the pandemic, is to help institutions that are interested but don't have uh, necessarily uh, the means to understand copyright and the license. And we provide guidelines to them, participating in lectures, workshops, and, um, and educational events, and we translate or write posts about open glam, um, updates on the copyright law reform, uh, and the difficulties of the Brazilian institutions, such as fires and other problems, explain topics like NFTs, open glam, and how to share the collections on the Wikimedia projects. But these glams really want is for their institutions, even the, if they are small ones, to be able to share their collections more widely, uh, especially the ones that are public, academic, or nonprofit. They usually want their knowledge to reach more people, but they just don't have the means and the staff availability to understand the particularities of copyright laws. In 2020 and 2021, we talked to more than 30 institutions. We created a special email address to attend these institutions. And at the beginning of the pandemic, we sent several emails offering meetings with guidelines to interest institutions and talk to several museums, archives, libraries, and universities. They also search uh, for us to give them, provide them with lectures, presentations, and sometimes to help their students if they were connected to educational uh, institutions. At one point, uh, we were contacted by the Getulio Vargas Foundation to help law students to understand open access and open GLAM policies in a project with the Sao Paulo Art Museum. This was an interesting uh, occasion as it was a way of helping the lack of quality professionals problem. And something that occurred to me during that presentation was the fact that in Brazil, uh, the copyright area is not that big, especially if you consider the interface between copyright and heritage. And even more so when we talk about open access. There needs to be more insensitives, uh, as well as awareness, conversations, and advocacy in these two areas in parallel, which, doesn't, uh, which just doesn't happen in Brazil often. And in order for us to enhance copyright exceptions, we need more policymakers to understand the situation. And without this kind of action and investment, um, open, gun, open GLAM cannot fully happen in Brazil and in Latin America. Uh, we had a big meeting with Rio de Janeiro superintendents of museums with more than 70 guests. Uh, but the main set of um, the meetings that we had in that, uh, that approach that I described earlier was the uh, Abrete Codico Hackathon, uh, which had several uh, uh, institutions and staff involved. 
We did guidance meetings, live sessions, and a video about open access, the license, open GLAM, and other policies, which was part of the legislation section of the event, as well as a, we shared a brochure with a 38-page uh, document with frequently asked questions related to GLAMs. Oops, sorry. Uh, during the meeting, staff had many, many questions. Uh, in some instances, they were desperate for help, especially because they didn't want to make mistakes and infringe copyright, compromising themselves and their institutions. And the four most frequently asked questions were, how do I use a CC license? How do I apply CC license on institutions' websites? How do I, uh, who, how, how to deal with the copyright of works that are not in public domain and finally how can we use creative commons license for the collections to reach a wider audience this last issue was the major concern due to COVID at the time uh, another very common question was about the case of orphan works and so our presentation usually explained copyright creative commons and the license open glam and practical application in the wikimedia project so they could enhance their outreach and dissemination which was always very important to them. And in this format, the four most frequent questions were answered and we could give them a minimal notion of copyright, open license, and how to make collections available. But much, much more is needed. Uh, Brazil wants to launch a brochure about, um, about and for GLAMs, uh, a course uh, of a few modules aimed at uh, Brazilian institutions and university students, law, history, communication, students, a newsletter, uh, and more regular posts, and especially a better connection to Wikimedia and the, open, the Glam Wiki ecosystem. But unfortunately, we don't have funding right now, which just, um, we just don't have it right now. Um, but we do, do want to work on advocating more and more for, for, for um, these changes to be made. That's it for my part. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanna. That was a really comprehensive overview of the situation in Brazil. Um, I really like the study that you did during COVID. I think you managed to turn what was a great threat to the sector into an opportunity to show the benefits of opening up their collection and open to encourage them to use CC licenses. And I think it's uh, it's a lesson that we could um, we could all draw from because it's um, it's it's really inspiring. Um, we'll now move to our next speaker, uh, Deborah De Angelis. Um, Deborah is um, the uh, an attorney at law based in Rome, in Italy. Uh, she's currently representative and legal lead of the Italian chapter in the Creative Commons Global Network since its constitution in 2018. Uh, Deborah is a legal expert in international copyright law, art and entertainment law and new technologies. She also worked as a legal advisor on copyright law to the previous Italian Minister of Cultural Heritage. And Deborah, you will talk to us about cultural heritage law in Italy. So. Uh, over to you. We look forward to your presentation. Hi, everyone. Thanks for um, inviting me to be here with you today. And thanks, Brigitte, for uh, your presentation. We know that uh, policy is uh, one of uh, the possible limits to an open culture besides money and people. We also are aware that copyright law may represent an obstacle to the open sharing of uh, cultural heritage when the cultural goods are still protected. We face difficulties uh, in understanding copyright law's principle, the duration of the protection and therefore the status of the work if uh, it is still protected or in the public domain worldwide, difficulties uh, in the application uh, of uh, the originality standard, uh, idea, expression, dichotomy, to determine if uh, a work uh, is uh, creative uh, or not. And difficulties also in the choice of uh, the applicable law in case of cross-border uses. 
also the lack in the, in the legislation of the freedom of panorama um, exceptions in Italy is another example of how copyright uh, may limit uh, taking photograph uh, or video footage uh, and creating other images of building sculptures uh, and other artwork uh, permanently located in public space. Um, Italy did not uh, uh, implement the freedom of uh, panorama exception as suggested uh, by Article 5, Letter H of the InfoSoc Directive number uh, 29 of uh, 2001. So, besides the difficulties faced by the copyright law, in Italy, the public cultural heritage in the public domain faces a more restrictive limit for the open sharing of digital images for commercial purposes. The cultural heritage code, uh, decreed legislative number 32, 2004. Accordingly to uh, the Italian Cultural Heritage Code, open culture is allowed only for personal use or study, for research, free expression, creative expression, or promotion of knowledge of cultural heritage carried out on a non-commercial basis. But in the case of reproduction uh, for commercial purposes of the public cultural heritage in the public domain, Article 107 of the Cultural Heritage Code provides that the ministry, the regions, or the other territorial public authorities may issue a request for a payment. This limitation does not allow a general by default application of open access principles. And this is a difficult to open up the open glam and the open culture in the realm of the Italian glams, due to the obligation to ask a previous permission for commercial uses of the digital reproduction of uh, public cultural heritage in the public domain and the related discretion of the authority to ask for a payment. This limitation stated by the cultural heritage represents a second layer of protection applicable to all cultural heritage when copyright protection has expired. Note that uh, this limitation imposed by the Catholic Code is more restrictive than copyright law because it is perpetual, doesn't have any deadline, and depends only on the will of the Cultural Heritage Institute. So this limitation is also against the principle stated by Article 14 of the DSM directive that stated that a faithful reproduction of a visual art in public domain stays in the public domain. As Creative Commons uh, Italy chapter, uh, we are working on tempering the feeling of losing control by Italian keys drafting a segmentation of different commercial uses allowed in the field of research, free expression, creative expression, or promotion of knowledge of cultural heritage exceptions, where the commercial purposes can also be present. Taking also into account the many different types of commercial use and their different impacts on the activities of cultural institution and Italian society as a whole. In this sense, we would like the Ministry of Culture to clarify that the so-called non-rivalous commercial uses 
are not subject to authorization and payment of the fee. It is necessary to distinguish the reuse resulting from open access project from other form of rival commercial uses, such as, for instance, the direct sale of images reproducing the cultural heritage. For example, images of cultural heritage in public domain released under a Creative Commons tools compatible with the open access, for example, the CC BY attribution uh, share alike license, do not create uh, any kind of exclusivity and the content remains available to the community for use and reuse with very few restrictions. Another example is concerning faithful reproduction of public domain cultural heritage, labeled with the public domain mark, PDM, or released under CC0, two tools suitable for sharing in the public domain according to open access principles. So to be clear, users enabled through such licenses or tools do not conflict with the economic exploitation of images by the institution themselves. Do not negatively impact the market for commercial exploitation of cultural heritage and on the contrary, positively impact Italian society by encouraging entrepreneur creators to reinvent their own heritage. Also, uh, we are working on finding a way on how to accomplish Glam's request to receive attribution of provenance on public domain material. And this is the work that we are doing with the Creative Commons GLAM platform working group number five. Unfortunately, it is a common practice to use the material held in archive, museum and galleries and libraries, especially for commercial purposes, uh, without giving the right credit uh, to those related to this content. Uh, and this is uh, one of the issues that limit uh, the uh, Italian Ministry of Culture to open also uh, culture for commercial use. To conclude uh, my speech, uh, the way to our goal still long to be accomplished. That's why we are engaged in a series of dialogues uh, with our Minister of Culture to try to overcome the fear of open culture, aiming for a better future. Also, besides organizing other practical projects, especially with uh, our friends in uh, Wikimedia Italy, and I'm sure uh, uh, Yolanda will uh, uh, speak about uh, one of these. And uh, all of this uh, is also for aiming a better future. And uh, I thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for this uh, also comprehensive overview of what the situation is like on the cultural heritage side in Italy. And thank you for the transition. Uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Yolanda, uh, Yolanda Pensa, who is, I'm, I'm sure, also a very familiar face uh, to you uh, in the Wikimedia community. Uh, she's a Wikipedian art critic and researcher. Uh, as a volunteer, she's been contributing to Wiki Wikipedia since 2006. Uh, she organized in 2016 Wikimedia uh, Ezino Lario. She's the chair of the Wikimedia Steering Committee and chair of Wikimedia it Italy. Um, she's been active in the implementation of Wiki Loves Monuments and in increasing the documentation of cultural heritage on Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects. Since 2006, she's been involved in triggering the use of open licenses in institutions, publishing, publishing research materials on Wikipedia, and rebalancing online geographic information with Wiki Africa. Over to you, Yolanda. You will have um, the last word as Viviana, unfortunately, cannot join us. 
Hello, thank you very much. Um, so what I wanted to uh, show you is uh, considering the situation of Italy that uh, Deborah uh, provided a quite uh, extensive overview. So what can we do? Uh, as a volunteer, as a Wikipedian and Wikimedian, um, my interest is how to upload the content on our project. How we can benefit from uh, this content? How can we collaborate co with cultural institution? So the problem that we face from our perspective, so the practical um, aspect of uh, how to engage institution and how to open content is actually the complexity of all this process. So we need a lot of uh, authorization. We need uh, to work with a lot of people and institution to make sure that we can uh, collaborate, that we can uh, open a collection. Um, so looking, of course, at the licensing on uh, photos or on reproduction, uh, the issue of properties, the issues of uh, artists and architects, considering that we don't have freedom of uh, panorama, the restriction uh, uh, of our legislation that add uh, these uh, fees uh, to the reuse, and of course, uh, um, uh, the rights uh, related to the possibility of uh, uh, taking photos of people. Um, so in uh, this complexity, we decided that uh, we want to move forward. So we want to uh, engage institution, and maybe an approach can be to try to engage all institutions at once. So what we decided to do is to launch a project called Empowering Italian Glams. It is a fantastic collaboration between Wikimedia Italy, uh, ICOM uh, uh, Italy, so the Association of Museums, Creative Commons, uh, and the University of Torino. So we also have a research partner. Um, we have uh, the support of Wikimedia Foundation, and we are targeting uh, to engage uh, 5,000 museums. Uh, 5,000 is actually the biggest number we will probably be able to reach uh, 3,000, uh, and maybe getting an answer from 500, so something like this. But the idea is, uh, how can we invite uh, all institutions to collaborate uh, with uh, Wikipedia? Uh, Wikipedia is a nice uh, catching word. The people know, uh, obviously, uh, the visibility of this project. Collaborating with Wikipedia for us uh, means uh, to uh, uh, engage in uh, opening content uh, and creating an open access policy. And so we, we design uh, an approach to engage institution. Um, basically, we have a, a three-step uh, process. Uh, so we are starting uh, now the first step. Uh, uh, we are now producing our pilot uh, uh, project by engaging uh, around 10 institutions in this first phase. And uh, the idea is uh, to invite uh, all institutions to release uh, a series of photos of their institution, uh, the exterior, the interior, some example of their collection, uh, under the uh, open tool CC0. Do the same with the text, describing the institution, and starting drafting an open access policy. Uh, then, uh, with a selection of those institutions, we will move forward uh, towards uh, opening a selection of their collection. And we are already launching uh, a collaboration with uh, five uh, institutions uh, to open all of their work, so all of their um, heritage, uh, with a data management plan uh, based on open by default. Among those institutions is already engaged the Museum Egizio, the Egyptian Museum in Torino. Um, <clears throat> This approach, obviously, the argument to engage institution is uh, the typical argument, uh, of course, that we all know. So the advantages of uh, opening their collection, uh, the quality, improving uh, the procedures, um, also linking their uh, way of working to open access, open government, open data, open science. Of course, uh, museums are also research institutions and they're very often public institutions. We also have the FARO convention, which is a very good argument to uh, trigger the, the participation. Another argument is, of course, visibility. Uh, collaborating with the Wikipedia, with the Wikimedia project, with the OpenStreetMap means obviously to increase uh, the possibility of institution to um, gain visibility, but of course, opening uh, content is, uh, is obviously an, an important step for, uh, for this uh, access. Participation, uh, the possibility of uh, uh, engaging uh, the public, uh, uh, considering new ways the public, uh, active citizenship, innovation, uh, uh, the possibility of producing new services and products, and of course, uh, research, which I think is also a very important argument for in cultural institutions because uh, they have to uh, produce research, but they often cannot produce uh, research by themselves. So making their collection available for research is an important step 
that you invite others and also invite uh, citizen science in uh, contributing to uh, their mission. So I'm uh, I'm obviously a little bold uh, and uh, definitely an activist. So I'm, we have a very clear vision of uh, which are the tools and licenses we want and the one that we do not want. So considering the interoperability with uh, the Wikimedia project, of course, we have some limitations. And uh, those are basically the limitations that we present the institution. We also want to uh, force institution to think about CC0. So to think about the value of uh, not adding restriction, but also to ask people to cite uh, their work to uh, cite sources, but recognizing the value of not adding layers of restrictions. So this is why we encourage uh, also, and we make it very clear that to collaborate with us, uh, it is necessary to uh, not prohibiting uh, derivative work, allowing commercial reuse, and uh, not imposing the attribution on data. Um, basically, we are uh, suggesting three licenses um, uh, and tools. Uh, so the CC0 for all data, metadata, and digital reproduction. We uh, encourage this, or we pose and suggest that the CC by for uh, uh, everything that is associated to authorship. So whenever there is a signature, uh, if it's an internal document, an informative document, a um, website that only tells you the little story of the institution without a value of the author, why not putting that in a CC0? And uh, we encourage the CC by SA for everything that engage volunteers. So we come from the wiki, from Wikipedia, from the Wikimedia movement. For us, share alike, it's a little of the Richard Stallman heritage. Uh, so we trust uh, that the, the fact of keeping things open, in particular when there are collaborations and when there is volunteer work, it's an added value. Um, this uh, uh, suggestion is obviously uh, associated to different uh, material that the institution have. We do not look at only the collections. We look at uh, the resources that each institution produces. It can be open educational resources uh, or the didactic uh, material of the institution, the captions of their museum, um, the data they produce, uh, the publications. So everything is a, um, we suggest a, a license and a way of sharing this content their entire collections. So at the moment, uh, this first phase that uh, just started uh, is associated to a form, an online form. In this an online form, institutions are asked to uh, sign on an authorization that is also an open access policy. Uh, this is, was a way to reduce uh, the work flow. So uh, the document that states their uh, availability of uh, producing and providing open content also states uh, why they're doing it. So it's an open access policy. The second step is to share a series of images. We are suggesting 20 images, so images of uh, uh, the outside, inside, some example of the, the collection. So we are moving this uh, concept of uh, open images from the simple reproduction of the collection or sharing uh, collections towards something that is a bit more ambiguous, more linked to communication. And we think that this is, can be an easier way to engage institutions because they already share images with journalists, with uh, social media, with uh, people that ask for them for images. So having those images well uh, documented on the Wikimedia project with the good captions, uh, with data, um, we think these are a common interest, and also obviously we invite them to uh, provide uh, how they want to be cited. So not an attribution, but a, a courtesy of citing the source. We ask for a text, also in this case uh, in CC0, story of the collection or the institution. We ask them to check their data on Wikidata and to fill in a survey. So those are the steps uh, through which we are engaging them. And we are launching this, uh, we, we did a, we, we just finished uh, thanks to the work of uh, uh, ve two very active uh, Wikipedians and uh, expert of Wikidata. We just uh, finished to review all the data of uh, museum, uh, museum on Wikidata to update them with data from our national statistics um, to make sure that we have also the link to emails uh, and uh, the collaboration with ICOM Italy is also a resource in this way. And uh, we are we're starting the communication with a little group to make sure that the communication is efficient to then launch uh, all the uh, invitation to the 5,000 institutions we have contact with. 
So this is just to give you a sense of the form. And this is the work that uh, we are now <laughs> focusing on. Thanks. Thank you, Yolanda. Again, I think your presentation shows that uh, copyright is uh, copyright reform is is needed when you see all the steps, all the loops that cultural institutions have to jump through. If the law was um, making all this possible legally without much hassle, um, it would make sharing cultural heritage so much easier. Um, I see that we are almost at time. We have about three minutes left. I would like to save a minute or two to conclude, but also I would like to ask you if you had to name your biggest challenge in one word, what could it be? First with Giovanna and then Deborah and Yolanda. <laughs> the biggest challenge you faced in your, in your efforts in one word. Um, resources. Uh, I think resources in terms of funding and resources in terms of uh, people uh, to advocate for what we need. That's quite a comment. Understanding means as confidence and um, yeah, trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also quite widespread. And you, Yolanda? I think time. It has been so much, so long the time we've been investing in uh, trying to move uh, her Italian heritage on the Wikimedia project. And I think uh, um, to have a shortest deadline, I would like this, uh, those projects to end uh, rather than continue, uh, just because we want to move to some other topics that can be fascinating as well as this one. But I think uh, after a while, uh, it's long to uh, invest so much energy for such a long time and to see that uh, the machine doesn't really move uh, quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can if, be frustrating. If I can, yeah, if I can add just one cent, um, it is right, Rolanda, but maybe we have the time uh, on uh, our favor now since uh, there are so many years uh, and we know that uh, social and political issues are long process and uh, maybe after 10 years uh, we are quite uh, in the in the moment that we should achieve some results yes so stay tuned something is bound to happen very soon <laughs> yes yes um, i believe <laughs> well listen thank you so much for for making it to this session um we had some technical difficulties. I'm so grateful to the organizers that we make we could make it work. Thank you for the to the participants for your patience and uh, for joining us in this session. Um, thank you to our speakers uh, for making it today. Sorry that Viviana couldn't come, but Viviana, you were here in spirit. Uh, I will share in the notes uh, some links that I wanted to share with you, but now we're at time. So I would just want to say enjoy. Uh, the closing toast that's about to happen and hopefully see you very all uh, see you all very soon all right <laughs> goodbye thank you bye bye thank you <laughs> bye bye